It's True Grit on Ray Bradbury's Mars as a young girl goes in pursuit of justice across the haunted deserts of the Red Planet in The Strange. That's the book I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello again, everyone. Thomas here, your host as always. Thank you all for joining me. A book like The Strange is one of those wonderful surprises that makes reading SFF such an unbeatable pastime. A book like this is a bolt from the blue or maybe the red. <laughs> Nathan Ballingrud delivers one of the most sublimely executed adventures I have read in quite a while, and he's done it not by trying to produce bleeding-edge hard SF or space opera, but by hewing closely to the old-fashioned conceits of planetary romance, a genre that rose to popularity over a hundred years ago, and that's held its own ever since. This is a space western set on Ray Bradbury's Mars, essentially Charles Fortas's classic True Grit, played out among the haunted dunes of a red planet colonized by humans since the mid-19th century. But Ballingrud is not simply mining nostalgia. Once his alternate history is established, and the strange takes place not in the future, but in the 1930s, the book has the voice and character of a story that could only have been written in the 2020s. Old and new sensibilities are brought together to thrilling effect. Annabelle Crisp is a 14-year-old girl living in the Martian colony of New Galveston, which lies a short distance from Digtown, a maze-like mining settlement digging up a mineral called The Strange. Now, this is the kind of name alien minerals have to have in a planetary romance saga, not some stuffy mouthful of Latin. Much of the goal of world-building in stories like these is about feeling it. And from the moment we learn about The Strange, we know all we need to know about how unknown the majority of this vast red frontier is to the human settlers who have come here to seek their fortunes. Immediately, a Mars that seems easy to tame because people can breathe on it turns out to be no less mysterious and deadly than the vast plains and mountains of the American West, back when the Donner Party thought they were taking a quick shortcut. The settlers ship the strange back home to Earth because it has the ability somehow to add what Annabelle calls the illusion of intelligence to the engines, the clanking mechanical robots to which humans have assigned all of life's menial tasks. Now, the strange does something else to engines, which everyone finds out a little bit too late, but that's just the clever way Ballingrud slips his commentary into his narrative. Isn't it just like people to rush in exploiting a natural resource panacea as hard and fast as we can, leaving any possible negative consequences to be worried about later? Now, as the book opens, later has arrived. Annabelle's mother, Alice, left for Earth a year before on a family matter, and shortly afterward, with no warning or explanation, all contact with Earth was lost. This event is now referred to as the Silence. Now, Annabelle works with her father Sam at the family business, the Mother Earth Diner, and the night that changes her life and the course of her future begins when a desert-dwelling bandit named Silas Munt saunters in just before closing and robs the place of food and gear. Silas and his cohorts get away, but Annabelle is devastated that one of the stolen items is a cylinder recording of her mother. It's all she has to remember Alice by. Her father seems utterly dispirited, and she is appalled at the near-total lack of effort the local law puts towards capturing the bandits. The sheriff cites the need not to disrupt relations with the miners, the dangers of following who knows where in the Martian wilderness, and the sheriff also tells her, you're going to have to accustom yourself to disappointment, young Miss Crisp. This will define Annabelle's entire outlook toward the world of adults from here on. Despite the fantastical nature of the setting, The Strange gives us deeply human characters, even those who fit cleanly into genre archetypes, and resolves its narrative goals in a far more convincing and realistic way than a great many escapist adventures I've read that strive to make the worlds they offer us seem much more grounded and real. Annabelle is every inch a kid of 14. Now, this is absolutely not a YA novel, but among young adult SFF in particular, I usually feel as if I'm reading about too many young heroes who don't ring true written by authors who are dreaming up a highly romanticized ideal of what they wish their own adolescent and teenage years should have been, and not what they were. Hyper-competent teen warriors who dive into the fray and bring down injustice and evil like Marvel superheroes might scratch an itch, but they don't read like 
kids. Annabelle's a kid. She does have bravery, and stubbornness, and true grit, and all the righteous outrage of a young person who knows the world should be better but can only watch in dismay as the adults around them fail and fail and fail again. Also, Ballingrud was largely inspired by his daughter, whose own uncertain future in a world the adults have broken is naturally concerning to him as a parent. But Annabelle is also immature and petulant and has to learn that you don't always get what you want when you want it, and that yelling and screaming won't get it to you any faster. And she has to grow into empathy, even for the worst losers and failures among the adults she meets. The robbery on its own is not what does her family the worst damage. But the way things accelerate in its aftermath is, before long, Annabelle is alone, setting off on a foolhardy quest to find Silas's hideout wherever it may be. Alone, but with reluctant companions. Watson is her kitchen engine, basically a robot dishwasher not exactly built for rough country, but we're going to feel the emotional attachment to him we always feel for loyal, non-human characters in these kinds of adventure stories. Joe Pruitt is the pilot of the saucer that was scheduled to make its regular return to Earth when the silence struck, and yes, we do find out why it never went back anyway. He goes from a figure of pathos and contempt, a guy ruined by alcoholism, to someone truly tragic. And Ballingrud's deft touch at character development allows us to see, even as Annabelle, who's very young, cannot, just how many different things have made him a broken man. We may not like him, but his struggles earn sympathy, while Annabelle, whom we naturally do like and root for, is often not sympathetic in many of the choices she makes, which can be hot-headed and selfish and put the lives of others at risk. Annabelle's rooster Cogburn in this quest is Sally Milkwood, a traitor and occasional freebooter, who was actually one of Silas's partners in the initial raid on the diner. But she agrees to lead Annabelle mostly for Joe's sake, and also because... Annabelle has some growing up to do, and a lot of that is going to hinge on learning some things she's never known about the planet that has now become her forever home, through no choice of her own. A bond is built between them, but Ballingrud never allows it to slide into the trite cliché of Sally becoming a surrogate mother or anything. Now that's weak writing, and Ballingrud has too much respect for his vision and his audience to fall back on stuff like that. I loved how everything in this book paid homage to classic concepts, but kept finding ways to take its story down unexpected trailheads. It is indeed strange, and in the best way. What begins as a retro-future action western becomes a coming-of-age story that shifts into an almost mythopoeic weird western, even bringing in fungal horror, because why not? There are elements of gear punk and ghost stories, some pinpoint critiques of colonialism, and even nice little nods to H.G. Wells here and there. Now, Bradbury is never openly referenced, but it's as if you can feel his shade lurking in the distance, sort of, you know, nodding its approval. And I loved even more the way that some questions and mysteries remain unresolved, while conflicts that do resolve don't do so in expected ways. We're not in one of those generic tales where the big bad is defeated with such finality that everyone at the end is able to go back to their old lives, none the worse for their ordeals. I mean, does Annabelle end up with what she wanted, or does she get what she needs? Because it sometimes turns out that the end of an adventure puts you where you were meant to be instead of where you thought you were going. The Strange is a story on an epic scale with an intimate focus. It's a rare example of a tale with almost too many moving parts still managing to slot them all together so well that I, I can't think of anything I would change given the chance. I put the book down when I was done and felt only satisfaction. And I know that a great deal of effort goes into writing that seems effortless, and I have to give all respect to Nathan Ballingrud for what he has achieved here. I've read so many self-important novels that feel like they are reaching so hard for greatness. Turns out that storytelling with high ambitions but an unpretentious approach can pull off greatness far more often than you think. And there you have it. That's all I have time for on this episode. And remember, the most important thing. These are reviews. You're not always going to agree with me. 
But if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my T Public store and at my Patreon, where you recruits into Wink's army. Occasionally, we'll get little perks like early access to some of my videos, but mostly the purpose of the Patreon is for those folks who want to help me out paying Matt Olson. My brilliant and highly gifted and talented channel artist who does all of my wonderful and incredible thumbnails for me. So I want to thank those people for their added support. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, please stay safe and healthy and happy reading.